Hi. Um, hi, can you guys hear me? Good. So I think we're live. Um, welcome to our first episode of At Home with L'Oreal Paris. So excited to be talking to you guys all. I hope that everyone is staying safe and sane and healthy and that you and your loved ones are taken care of. Um, that's most important right now. And, you know, on the topic of taking care of each other, that's kind of why we're here today. So we are going to talk to you about L'Oreal Paris Women of Worth and bring you one of our women in particular. Um, her name is Nicola. She'll be here in a minute. But I want to tell you first, uh, really quickly, what Women of Worth is. So Women of Worth is L'Oreal Paris's signature philanthropic program. We're actually in our 15th year of doing it, if you can believe it. So what we do is each year, L'Oreal Paris issues a national call for nominations. And we look for women who are doing amazing things in their community through established you know, nonprofit organizations. And we find them and we find 10 of them. It's so hard because they're so amazing. So many amazing things that kind of people are doing in their communities. And there are 10 honorees each year get a grant. Um, and then on top of the grant, we also, you know, shine a spotlight on them, on their causes, on the incredible work that they're doing. Um, and it's just a very, very humbling experience. So Without further ado, that's a little bit of background. Let's get to know someone in particular. Her name is Nicola Mitchell. Um, let's, I think we're gonna look at a video of her, so let's let's check that out. My goal is to make sure the girls have a good time. They just need love. The lack of sleep, just everything that I'm doing is worth it when I see their faces. My mother's a woman of worth because she's selfless. Nicola is very supportive. She's been through a lot and she is very strong and powerful. I think it's a great thing what she's done, and it's amazing. She can change a life. I'm living proof she changed my life. If we know how much power we really possess, there's no stopping us. Wow, so I've seen that video like 10 times, maybe more now, and I get the chills every time. Welcome, Nicola. Hi, Kara. Hi, thank you for being here. Um, okay, so today we're going to chat, me and you. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to learn a little bit about your organization, or I know, but I, I want the rest of the world to hear it. Um, okay. We'll do a bit of that, and then we're going to welcome on Sir John, um, and we'll have another special guest. So let's get started. Um, before we do, guys, if you're tuning in, if you're watching, please submit questions. Um, go ahead and comment. We want to see them. We want to be able to answer them. We're going to do a bit of a Q&A later. So anytime you want, shoot us a comment. We're watching them. We're monitoring them. Um, yeah. So Nicola, tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization, Girls Who Brunch, which was honored last year as a L'Oreal Paris. You were honored last year as a L'Oreal Paris Woman of Worth. Okay, so my organization is Girls Who Brunch Tour, and for the last four years, we have went nationwide, and we've serviced 8,000 girls. What we do, we take girls who are at risk and put them with girls with a better circumstance, and we provide them with a girls' empowerment conference. Mm -hmm. um, being a woman of worth was like, being picked was, was crazy because I knew what I did was important to me, but I didn't think it was important to everyone else so i'm really happy to be here and just all the doors that has opened ever since i met you guys so thank you so much yes, oh no you're amazing um when i learned about what you did i think we were all super moved i'd love to hear okay so you you do the these tours with girls mm -hmm. who are from underprivileged underserved communities you give them mm -hmm. empowerment you give them tools practical tools you give them resources you give them mentorship how are you doing that in the age of Corona? Like what's, you know, obviously a lot of it was face to face. So what are you doing now? Wow, it's been challenging. So yeah, most of my girls are at risk girls. They're girls rescued from the sex trade, girls in group homes. Wow. So right now, when you think about that demographics of girls, they do not have tools like everyone else thinks, you know? Yeah. So everyone is talking about how we can do school stuff, school from home and things, but girls don't even have access to Wi-Fi. They don't have wow. access to internet. They don't have access to devices. You know, if their mom only has one computer to work from, or they may not even have that, what do you do now? So we have um, the second day of the shutdown, we started online uh, Facebook Lives, and we do workshops, we do panels, we do book readings three times a day, five days a week, and we bring in our girls, we bring in community leaders, you even participated and did a <laughs> phenomenal job, and you know, we just want 
to empower our girls and give and let them know that they're still light because kids don't even really know they're scared we're scared but kids are super scared so if we can bring light to them and let them just have a good time and see that everyone loves them that's one thing i want right now that's amazing you're an angel um yeah what struck me about what you said is that um a lot of them you said some of them don't even have like supervision at home or they don't necessarily have um, anyone telling them, you know, you got to get online into your school or they don't have the structure that sometimes they have. And the fact that you're trying to provide that give them something to fall back on is just um, it's incredible. Well, thank you. Yeah, like I, I knew that there were issues. I knew that there were. Hello. Okay, so I knew that there were issues, but once they were at home and they started FaceTiming me thinking that um, I'm their best friend, I'm seeing their circumstance. You know, I know and I see, but like seeing the inside of their homes, seeing that their parents are gone and we're supposed to be quarantined, um, it's like, okay, this is even more important. And they're looking forward to it. Like, Miss Nicola, are we going on Monday? I'm like, yeah, you know, so I work myself and locate talent to do it, so. It's amazing. So speaking of talent, to speak to these girls, you had one this morning with Sir John, right? Yes, he was phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know who Sir John is, um, Sir John is the L'Oreal Paris celebrity makeup artist, but he's so much more than that. Of course, he's one of the most talented makeup artists on the face of the planet. I'm a little biased, but it's true. Um, but he's also a major advocate for female empowerment. Um, he believes in women. He believes on the beauty that's inside. And, you know, as a brand that stands for worth and empowerment and stands for women, I think working with Sir John has been just incredible. So I, I was so happy to see him talk to the girls this morning. And I think I think they really enjoyed it. It was it was funny. Their comments were everything from his favorite drugstore foundation, which is, you know, of course, L'Oreal, um, to deeper stuff on bullying and self-esteem. And, and it was really special. So maybe, um, you know, if you guys haven't tuned in yet, we have another show called Le Look. Um, we're going to show you a quick teaser because it features the Sir John and then we'll uh, we'll bring him on. We're going to do skin, sculpting, contouring, some brows and a color stay linen. It's, it's not, not about being visually stunning. It's, it's about radiating real. something that is inside that makes everyone in the room want to just be that much closer. Okay, I'm tuning in for that one. So, hey, everyone. <laughs> Hi, welcome, hey guys. Sir John. Hi. Good afternoon. Good, good Friday. How's it going? I'm glad to be here. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for you know this morning um, your live stream with the girls who brunch tour was awesome. I was your number one fan. Um, so yes, welcome. Thank so you. I'm happy to have the two of you together because when I think about empowerment and young girls and community engagement and all these things that are almost more important now than ever, I think you're two of the people that honestly I look up to the most. So would love to hear, you know, from you guys kind of what what it was like for you, first of all, Sir John, talking to the girls this morning, taking a step away from the usual routine. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, well, first off, I have to give them hats off to Nicola, like, you know, for what you're doing, for rallying around uh, these young women and a t in, in a space that it's so needed, it's so needed. And we take for granted, you know, because we, we, you know, we're in a world where we're sometimes uh, we're self-obsessed. We all are in the selfie, you know, induced yeah. generation. But what you're doing is so selfless that it's just, it inspires me to be a better person, a better family member, brother, son. So yeah, I, this morning I got up, I'm in Los Angeles. You guys are on the East Coast. And I, I got a chance to really have a nice connection with all of the young ladies that you work with through v, um, via a, what is this called? The platform is called a Facebook Live. That was the Facebook, yeah. <laughs> Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was, you know, so some of the questions were just really thought provoking, you know? And when, it, when I say thought provoking, it's about like bullying or confidence. A lot of these girls um, are, you know, in school. And, you know, I, I remember you told me that one of them who was nine years old, she actually committed suicide. Uh, yeah. for bullying, you know? And so, and for me, that just was so jar jarring and I just couldn't even wrap my head around it because, you know, we all we see is our own pot. So I was like, okay, how can I, what, what kind of message can I give to these uh, young ladies? And it was just basically coming from a place of, even though you may be going through, check on other women, you know, in this time, check on other women to start a community uh, that can also, you know, de envelop you in love. 
So it's not always about how, how am I doing, even though it, it is about a temperature check. It is about a check in how we check in daily with ourselves. But also, you know, send out some love to your girlfriends, send out um, love to people who made you laugh. You that know, was so a great, like a really practical piece of advice that I thought even anyone at home could take. Will you share it again for the people yeah. watching? Yeah. So, you know, can you tell me the question? So the question we, we were talking about earlier. I think was, you basically gave the girls a tip of like, there's a lot you can do to look beautiful on the outside. And you gave them some practical stuff. But then you were like, your community, that's who you should be reaching out to. Yeah. Do yeah. three things. Check in with three people today. Like that was. And the thing is, it's like, you know, a lot of us, we, we're only thinking about you know, how we're, how we're not, how we're feeling, you know, how the, our life affects us, how the COVID affects us, the, you know, the, the stay at home orders. But what I wanted those girls to think about is, you know, what I want you to do is create an army. I love girl, I'm all about girl power and women supporting women. So, but what that starts with, it starts with, you know, hey, listen, I know someone who's less fortunate than I am. I know someone who actually is bullied more than I am. So, you know, putting yourself aside, not self-sacrificing, but be serving you know the best way to get through this is service it's like i'm learning from nicola the best way to get through this is service and also confidence they were we were talking about confidence in young women and it doesn't come from something physical like you know a lot of us think that confidence you know comes from as we teach children or younger adults confidence it doesn't come from something that you put on it comes from a feeling that's inside you know so yeah. like hopefully and coming from someone who does makeup for a living which mm -hmm. you know some people think it's about the outside, but it, it really is about the inside, isn't it? It's an inside job, Cara. It's like, to your yeah. point, it's such an inside job. You know, the, 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 I'll tell you this, being around Beyonce's or who, Rihanna's or JLo's or whatever, Mariah's, when you, when you look at these women, one thing that they have in common what, that runs parallel through all of them is it's not about what you put on them as much as an inner voice they have in their head of loving themselves. They love on themselves. And it doesn't happen to do with anything that you purchase, anything that you someone gives to you or does for you. It's just like, hey, listen, I, I know where I came from. I'm liking my journey. And I know that I need love in order to get to the next space. You know, Absolutely. so self-love isn't selfish. Well, you know, like shameless brand tag, but the truth is um, I've been working for L'Oreal for almost seven years and the iconic tagline, because you're worth mm -hmm. it. I say it so many times a day that mm -hmm. I swear I feel it more now. Yeah. It's an affirmation, and that's Absolutely. that is what the brand stands for, and it's what we found in you, Nicola. Of like the work that you're doing is about making these girls feel worth it, and that gives them the strength to, you know, whatever it is that they're going through, um, to carry on. And you know, you, Sir John, you build women up all the time, and I love this concept of like a girl army. Do you see that at all, Nicola, with with your girls? Do you see like a community between them as you bring them together? Yes, because when they first come in, um, it's like our conversation this morning and shameless plugs, the webinar I listened to told me to wear a white t-shirt because I'll always be cute. So I changed my whole outfit for you today. But um, when they first come in, they don't know each other and we make them interact with each other. They're, you know, they have to dance with each other. If you're shy, you better make a friend. Somebody's going to dance for you. We make them talk to each other. And by the time it's over, it is like an army. Like they're crying. They don't want to leave. They're, they've made so many friends. They're talking to each other afterwards. And it's like, wow. And then when we have our gala in, um, it was supposed to be in May here in Atlanta from in Memorial Day weekend every year. We bring them in from across the nation. And so I have a very powerful picture I will share with both of you later on. It's four of them. They just met that morning at the day conference. And by the basketball game, they were like together. And one of the moms caught the shot. And they were from four different cities, never met before. And that's all it's about. We want them to know that their sisterhood, no matter your circumstance, no matter what you have, no matter who your parents may be, we have to take each, take care of each other because we're all we got. Absolutely. And you know what? Right now, that is, I think, what's become so, so clear to the whole world is that it's right. about taking care of each other. And there may have been a time where it wasn't quite as top of mind, but what strikes me about people like you who dedicate your life to giving back is that you knew it. You knew it without having to be told. So, you know, what made you start the organization? You can tell us real quick and then we'll get some questions. But I just, I think it's it's so interesting to know, like, what gave you the impetus to, to dedicate yourself this way? Because I was an at-risk kid. Um, I was raped multiple times before I turned 15 years old. I had my first daughter five days after my 15th birthday. And um, I had to become an overachiever to try to balance it, I thought, in my head. And 
I figure that if we can break the cycles of things when we're young and help them earlier, then they're going to grow, going to grow into more productive women. Because mm-hmm. I didn't find myself till I was 33. I don't wow. want them to have to wait till that long. Wow. I am blown away. You are, you're truly a woman of worth. Like that's, yeah. it's everything that you do and you are. I mean, Sir John, I know you, you're probably getting all emotional right now. I was just um, like, I- <laughs> <laughs> breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. It's powerful, <laughs> though. It's powerful. Yeah. I know. Um, what about you, Sir John? I mean, you came up in the industry at a you know a tough time before before a lot of social media and things kind of changed. What do you see in terms of confidence that's changed? Tell us a bit about your you know your journey to this place. Yeah. Give us some well, gold. Um. So yeah. So I you know I started in the business. Uh, it's like fifteen or twenty. I've been a makeup artist for about 20 years, but I started in the business 15 years ago, assisting Charlotte Tilbury, Pat McGrath. And, you know, it was, it happened really fast. You know, Naomi Campbell was my first client. L'Oreal Paris enveloped me like so quickly. And then I was on my way to tour and Super Bowl and everything like this, you know. But one thing I realized is that, uh, you know, what I'm, what I'm happy about now is the fact that the beauty industry and also the fashion industry, even though sometimes they're a little slower to catch up to beauty, beauty is so emotional. You know, when yeah. you look at a handbag, you're, you're not looking at your handbag in the mirror. You're not looking at your jacket in the mirror like a concealer covers up an emotional scar or or something like that. So for me, the way to tap into people or to or to give of myself would be to and like to help them get rid of any kind of insecurities. So I'm I'm there as like a battery in their back. I just want to just make women as confident as possible. But one thing I love about the beauty industry now is that there's so much inclusivity. Yeah. Uh, diversity and inclusivity. This is the golden age of diversity and inclusion. And when I say in- inclusivity, it doesn't necessarily mean cultural uh, context, but it's like, you know, s- body shape, body size, some girl whose hips were larger than they were last year, or, you know, some girl who has short hair or who don't, but everyone is invited to the party. And I think that being in a business right now where everyone starts to have a voice, I think that's what we were talking about earlier to the young ladies. Listen, I want you to think about everyone who's on your block, everyone who's in this building that you live in. All of those people's opinions matter now in a way they didn't before. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, Sir John, what's so amazing about you is that every woman you work on, and I know a lot of the talent that you've worked on in the past or, you know, projects we've done together, and they step away, they look beautiful and they feel powerful because yeah. you you coach them and you do their makeup and you lift them up and you lift women up. And it's um it's beautiful to see. And I think that's kind of why this conversation made sense because the two of you have that in common. Um, yours are a bit younger, I think, Nicola, but you never know. So, um, I was going to say to your point, Cara, yeah. can I say something there? So one thing is, I know that like, you know, when we look at cosmetics, cause you know, we're in beauty, we're all working in an area where we want people to feel beautiful. We want them to feel powerful women. Um, because guys don't have that. We don't, we're not chipped away at the same way women are every day. It's from the moment they wake up and they look at their phones. But I will say that. It's it's one of the things that it's a group effort. It, it doesn't happen, uh, you know, by yourself. You need community. And so one thing I think that is really amazing about what you're doing, also, Cara, what you do every day, is you know, rallying around, rallying around women, rallying around the women, make sure that they feel supported. And you know, a lipstick can change the world. And I, when I say that, people laugh like, "Oh my God, this guy is crazy." But if you really think about this, when you you know give a woman a lipstick, for example, it's called the hospital effect. So have you heard of the hospital effect? After a woman has a baby. You know, she puts, you know, a few days later, the whole hospital or the floor knows that she's ready to go home or she's on her way back to health. When she puts her first, you know, lipstick on, she's been there for two weeks or three days or whatever that looks like. My team sent me Glam Squad the next day. <laughs> yeah. So, so what that means is like, you know, when, and it, because it changes the needle emotionally inside. When you pass a mirror, even if, even though we're home and we're doing a lot of Zoom calls, put on a bright red lipstick or an orange red lip. It will change the, your sense of self. And if a mom feels better about her journey, if she feels okay with herself, she's going to be a better mom. She's going to be a better wife. She's going to be better at work. It's outward facing. So, and it does move and push the needle in terms of the community. So all I say, it starts with self. Selfish, self-care is not selfish. No, it's not. Confidence and feeling worth it and feeling empowered make all the difference. And how you look on that side and how you feel about yourself is all, it all parts, all plays a part. And I think it starts on the inside and you know what? Also have fun. We have a lot of fun in what we do sometimes. Um, you guys are the best. Okay, so I think I think we have some questions from you guys watching. Let's let's hear them. Let's see them. Okay, dear love, how do you continue to provide the unlimited amount of resources to the young girls during this crisis who don't have access to technology like laptops or tablets? I think that's for you, Nicola. 
Okay, so right now I am in the process of um, getting certified with uh, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. Whoever boosts me first, shameless plug, um, <laughs> we need educational devices. So that is my, my first source because we were accepting devices, but people were giving us their old um, tablets and things, and they don't have um, Microsoft Office on there. They don't have things like that. So I'm trying to stay up to date and that's what I'm working on now. Got it. Yeah. And you also mentioned to me, like, that's why you do Facebook Live, because for the yeah. most part, that's what they kind of can access. So yeah. um, I like how you're being smart and nimble and you're just making it work like we all are right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, trying to, Lord. You're doing it. You're doing amazing. OK, um, let's get some more. We love Sir John. I just went and bought all of Kroger's lemons. <laughs> <laughs> We were talking to give you guys some context. We were talking about how can young girls who don't have a lot of money to spend on t expensive skincare, you know, make sure that they don't have acne or make sure that, you know, they're normalizing their complexion. And lemons are just such a great way to alkalize your body, to detox. So uh, just squeeze a lemon a day, put a little bit of cayenne pepper in there if you have, if you, if you can, not regular black pepper, but cayenne. And what it does is it detoxifies your insides. So guys, it's it gut health happens to show up here. So I'm all about that too. I don't, that's a whole nother. That's a good tip. And that's why I love working for a brand that's so accessible. You know, like with L'Oreal, this stuff is available in the drugstore or the pharmacy or the supermarket mm -hmm. and it's affordable, it's achievable and the innovation is superior and to, you know, to none. So I think um, that's one of the things that's great about like that, that mass appeal. And I know Sir John with you, like you're super luxury, but then you also are able to give people things that like they can pick up and grab Absolutely. at Walmart and yeah. um, it helps, right? Yeah. To be able to get something. Totally. Yeah. Nicola, what was the, can you tell them about the remedy I had earlier for, if you don't have a lot of money, how do you reinvent your closet? What, what, do you remember that? And you're wearing part of it. The white tea, you can never go wrong on a white tea, <laughs> i.e. myself, it'll make you beautiful. And always um, use your makeup as an accessory. Yeah. So if you have to put on a bright uh, gloss, a bright lipstick, you know, use that as an accessory. Yeah. Absolutely. All yeah. right, guys, we have another one. Um, what can the community do to help with the Girls Who Brunch organization going full force? Oh, wow. So we always need speakers. We always need donations. As soon as the world opens, Lord, can't wait. You know, we need schools. We need facilities. Um, again, shameless plug to L'Oreal. As soon as I stated, um, I was, I wanted to go to New York, Miss Kara, I mean, your team jumped on, like trying to help me find a school in New York. Um, my L'Oreal sisters helped me find a, uh, women of work sisters helped me find a school in LA. So that's what we need. We need just access to the girls. That's the biggest, biggest resource that I need. Good. Yeah. And guys, during um, and at the end of this session, we're going to give you more information about how you can find the Girls Who Brunch organization, how you can give, how you can support. So um, we'll definitely provide that, too, because I feel like it's um, so inspiring every time I talk to you. I just want to give more and do more. OK, we have another question. We are just starting to see a life skills project with some disadvantaged girls in a community in Nigeria. And this group came up. Interesting. Okay. Wow. I think it's more of a comment. Okay, I think she's saying we may have came up. Okay, so yeah, we maybe met someone who said they wanted us to come to Nigeria. So maybe mm -hmm. that's why it's coming up on the Google search because we were starting to look for resources, but then that sponsor fell through. But I would mm -hmm. love to come to Nigeria, to Ghana. I'm from Jamaica. And so refugees, immigrants, that's my heart, you know. Mm -hmm. And I want not just to service the girls nationwide. And another di disclaimer, Girls Who Branch is not just for African-American girls. They're for all girls, all ethnicities, all demographics. If you wear a hijab, if you're Jewish, you are welcome to come to Girls Who Branch and feel at home. So, um, but yes, that's probably why we came up in Nigeria. But if you can help me get there, baby, I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a woman with global ambition. I like it. Um, okay, so speaking of people you've helped, I think we have someone with us today. Her name is Erica. She was one of the girls who was part of your organization, and now she's kind of doing the same thing you're doing. So your mentorship is spreading the good. Um, so let's bring Erica on and chat with her. I'd love to hear. 
Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi, Erica. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. So um, tell us. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm 17. I'm a senior in high school, and I'm also a sophomore in college because of my school's dual enrollment program. So I'm going to graduate in May with my associate's degree and my high school diploma. And I like to volunteer with various organizations, but my top two right now are Girls Who Brunch and TAF, which is the Aneurysm and AVM Foundation. And I work with them as their first national youth ambassador because I'm an AVM survivor myself. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to do that. I didn't, babe, I didn't know all of these things. And oh my God, my mind, I had to take my mouth off the ground just now. Sorry. That's amazing. Um, so you were part of the Girls Who Brunch tour, right? Um, yes, I came to watch the first year and then I volunteered the, I volunteered as a panelist and then this last girls who brunch that I was with, I had my own class on building self-confidence and wow. working with yourself. What was that like switching from like, kind of just observing, like attending to then being the one giving the info? Mm -hmm. um, I am a very outgoing person, but the first year I was very shy and I didn't want to really talk to anyone. And switching from sitting and watching and being around the girls to being a panelist where they could ask me questions and I could answer them and inspire them. And then switching to having my own class where it's just me leading all of these girls and answering them questions and leading a workshop. It definitely was a big transition, but being around the girls was my favorite part the whole time. That was something that stayed consistent. Wow. You're so well-spoken and incredible. Do you guys have, um, Sir John, did you, you know a little more about our question? Go ahead. I have a question for you. Um, so Erica, First of all, babe, you're such a light and, and, you know, and I just want you to continue to share that light with as many women and girls as this, you, you're a North star and just want you to know that you have to know that Thank but you. when you're talking. So when you, when you're with all of these girls, you know, these young ladies and, you know, some suffer from a lack of confidence or a lack of being able to see themselves, how do you, how do you get, how do you explain to them what confidence looks like? Confidence for me is really important. I actually had a corrective surgery for my AVM a couple of years back. And prior to that, my confidence was actually very low because I valued physical beauty more than emotional beauty before I got to really get to know myself. And talking to these girls, I got to tell them my story and how I grew with my AVM and that confidence comes from within and that if you compare yourself to anyone else, you're not going to get any farther. You're not going to be able to move up in life. So it's really important to work on yourself and make sure that you're content with how you're living and how you feel. Erica, I mean, mic drop. That's it's so true, and um, you're so wise beyond your years, and I'm just so Thank impressed, you. and I can't wait to continue to watch you from afar, and um, you know, stay connected with you, and see all the incredible things you're gonna do. Because, like Sir John said, you're gonna do them because you're a light. That's amazing. Thank, Thank you so you. much for for joining us today for our first um, at home. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy I'm here. All right, guys. So we promised you that we were going to tell you how you could get involved with Girls Who Brunch Tour. So Nicola, you kind of did this already, but just quick, how can people learn more, donate time, you know, energy, money, whatever it is, how, how can they get involved? Okay, you can go to our website. That's girlswhobrunchtour.com. Um, you can do backslash donate. And we have a list of what donations can happen. So even you can just donate as small as $10. Uh, we are also available for donations at PayPal. So that's paypal.me backslash GWBT and cash app girls who brunch. So we make it easy. And if you don't have the means to volunteer, I mean, to donate, we always look for volunteers. Um, we love to spread the love. And once you become part of the girls who brunch, you're part of our family. I definitely feel part of the family. Um, and I think what's, our, <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> So I think, you know, we all are looking for ways to get involved, you know, at home, um, whether it's in our own small circles and helping people out, like Sir John said, checking in on people, giving back however we can, taking care of each other. And I think, um, you know, that's what I'm doing and even more inspired to do than in talking with you guys. So um, all of you keep doing it. And I hope this gives you a little bit more of that, like, inspiration, because I know it did for me. Um, and thank you, Nicholas or John and Erica. Again, thank you guys for being a part of this. You are 
Thank powerful you. and inspirational and this is the kind of thing we needed on a on a friday afternoon um so and thank you guys for tuning in this was our first episode um Ooh. more to come hey <laughs> more to come and then we also have episode two of little look if you liked what sir john had to say today you check it out um it's like a master class it's very very cool um, it'll be on Tuesday, April 21st. So you can watch episode one now, and then you can tune in for episode two on the 21st. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and you'll get the reminders. And we want to hear from you, you know, leave a comment, tell us what kind of content you want to see, give us your ideas. Um, we're here for you. And, and that's the idea of this. I think we're all just figuring it out together right now. Um, mm -hmm. this is the only shirt I had because I'm not home and you know, this is, this is what we're doing. So, um, amazing. <laughs> Always. Always. So thank you guys. Thank you all again. And we'll be back. We'll see you soon. You're worth it. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. We're going to do skin, sculpting, contouring, some brows, and a color stay lip. It's not about being visually stunning. It's about radiating something that is inside that makes everyone in the room want to just be that much closer.